Nicole and this is Don and we're here at Indigenous World Winery in West Kelowna and we're going to be speaking with Ryan who's the sale manager here and he's going to be telling us about winery business in the Okanagan. Yeah great. Here are some interesting facts about the Indigenous World Winery and what makes this place so special. Firstly, the concept of the Indigenous World Winery emerged as the owners combined the beauty of the Okanagan Valley and the local Sea Oaks people's stewardship of the land here. Wow! And what makes the wine here so excellent is this land, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's extraordinary. Sure is. I hear that the, the Indigenous World Winery staff like to say when you drink the wine here, you're drinking the fruit of the land that supported the local Sea Oaks people for 10,000 years. That's awesome. I'm excited to check it out. Yeah, me too. Back in 2010, after the Vancouver Olympics, the Robert and Bernice Louis, who are the owners of the winery, were sitting in the kitchen looking down on their property and they, they realized there's a huge appetite for indigenous-based tourism, uh, especially in, uh, in British Columbia, but it's, the appetite for it is national and international. And so the Louis wanted a way to bring people together uh, in a comfortable way to share a little bit of the story of their culture and their language and their people. And they looked down on their vineyards uh, and being wine lovers themselves thought, wouldn't it be great if we had a winery? That's a great way to bring people together. Uh, having wine is really a great snapshot of what's going on in the valley at the time and where it's coming from. So you can taste the terroir, you can taste the season. Uh, and these lands have nurtured uh, the Okanagan people, the Nsilksen people for thousands and thousands of years. So what a great way to share the land with everybody else in the world by producing a product that you can taste the land. And so Indigenous World was born. And we've got the brand out there. The winery has grown almost threefold since 2016 when we first opened our doors. We're producing about 3,000 cases of wine a year. We're up to around nine or 10,000 cases a year. So that's very significant growth in just under six years. So very, very proud of that. And the, many of the wines have won a number of awards. We're very much in the growth stage as well, being a new winery. There are roughly 20 new wineries a year open every year in British Columbia. So being that we're still a young winery, we've only been open for uh, this going into our sixth year. 120 wineries have opened up since we opened up. So that's a lot of wineries. So we're here in the vineyard. Could you tell us what makes this area kind of the best for growing grapes? Well, it's the rich soil, the warm weather we have here in the Okanagan. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the beautiful things about the Okanagan is the diversity of soil and weather. So there are a lot of small microclimates in the area. So there's these neat little pockets everywhere throughout the valley where there's a great expression of terroir. So you have alluvial fans, you have silica, you have granite rock, and all these different things contribute to different flavors in wine. Uh, the wine industry here in the Okanagan is very young. So you think of New World wines, say Australia or California, mm -hmm. those wine industries are still 250 years old. Ours is a baby by comparison it's maybe 40 years old so we have not been producing wines here very long so we're very much in the pioneering stages so what do we have going on here Ryan this is where the magic happens so this is our cellar so the way winemaking works is in the fall we harvest grapes they come in they get crushed the grapes and the juice go into these tanks where we add yeast. The yeast ferments the sugars in the grape juice and that basically is wine. So these tanks in the fall will be full at various levels, full okay. of wine being fermented, turning into the beautiful beverage that we all love and adore so much. Wow. Um, currently, we're getting ready to bottle a bunch of wine being mm -hmm. uh, it's the off season. so. The vineyards are still growing. We don't have grapes coming in. So this is the time of year where you're generally finishing wine and bottling it. And we are just getting prepared for that uh, for next week. So we'll be okay. bottling eight new wines next week. And so these tanks will get emptied onto a bottling line that comes to the facility here. Mm -hmm. The juice goes into the bottling line and comes out in bottles. 
where we can deliver it to the customers so they can enjoy it worldwide. That's awesome. Uh, I mean, a lot of people think of the wine industry as very glamorous. It's lots of parties and fancy dinners and things, mm -hmm. but really winemaking is farming is what yeah. it is. It's 90% of the work is done in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of it's done in here, but it's it's a lot of hard work, um, a lot of late nights and long days. But we're so glad you guys do all that hard work. Yeah, I bet you are, yes. All right, so Ryan, what do we have going on here? These are Charmette tanks. So these are specialized fermentation tanks that are used for making sparkling wine. So two years ago, we decided that the Muscat in our vineyard would make an excellent sparkling wine. And so we purchased these tanks to begin a sparkling wine program. The sparkling wines are named after the women in the Louis family and the Muscat grapes that we grow here and ferment in these tanks to make into sparkling wine, we call it Huenem Huenem, which means hummingbird in the Silks language. And that is the traditional name of the eldest daughter in the Louis family, Casino Louis. Is there anything else that you do that kind of incorporates the Selic language or maybe the culture? Yeah, so we have four wines currently with a fifth coming down the line that are named after family members. So our entire sparkling wine program is named after women in the Louis family. The um, sort of the idea is to highlight the importance of women in indigenous cultures. Uh, so the first two sparkling wines we released, Lepchit and Huenem Huenem, were both named after the two daughters in the Louis family. Um, and then we have a third sparkling wine, which will be a traditional style, more similar to Champagne. Uh, and that'll be named after the mother, and that will be called Simhikin, which means Mother Grizzly Bear Protector. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's so amazing that you guys are incorporating the Selic kind of language and culture into this winery. Part of what we wanted to do here at Indigenous World was share some of the language and the culture uh, of the people with them. And that the names is a great way to do it because there are some beautiful words that have beautiful meaning that we don't have in the English language. So mm -hmm. Lepchit, for example, which is our sparkling rosé wine, Lepchit translates to the shimmer of the sunlight on the rippling water in a river spillway. Wow, they have a word for that. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Wow, look at this machine, Ryan. A thing of beauty, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What, what does it do? Can you tell me about the process? So this is our 500 liter Mueller still. So this is a combination still. So there are basically two kinds of still. There's a column still, column, and there are pot stills, which are large pots with a neck on them. And this is a combination or a hybrid still, a uh, capacity of about 500 liters. So the way this works is, we take the uh, fermented, we call it low wine um, or wash, uh, and we add it into this. We heat it up to uh, just above 70 degrees where alcohol starts to evaporate. And it goes from the kettle through these columns. Each one of these columns has a copper plate in it. So each one of these windows has a plate in it. The alcohol vapors go back and forth across the plates, taking out the impurities. Uh, and at the end, we get a distilled product come out this little spout here and this bucket catches it. Oh, wow. And does it do this process all on its own or are there certain There's things some, you need to adjust? You need a person to oversee it. It's not a fully automated process. That's where our distiller comes into play. Colin Wirtz is uh, our distiller. Amazing guy, has already won us a couple of boards in the first oh. year that we've been operating. Um, but yeah, it, it requires some refining as you go along. There uh, are steps that you have to take the beginning of the fermentation uh, process. You can't use that product. The end of the fermentation, you can't use that. Okay. So you really need the heart. You can't use the heads or the tails. Uh, and so if someone has to oversee the distillation process to make sure that we're not putting substandard product or potentially poisonous product into the, uh, the products we release in bottle. Um, so, Ryan, I was wondering, when designing your labels and your logo, what were some of the thoughts and strategies that went into the creating process? Well, a lot of thought went into the design of the labels. So, 
uh, first and foremost was we wanted it to be classy with sort of a traditional feel, so sort of a French or Italian style, but we went, didn't want to be just like them. Um, there weren't a lot of traditional images um, that there are with the interior, the, the Okanagan people, the Insilksim people. Uh, so we chose animals that are, have some cultural significance. So we chose the bald eagle and the owl and the, the black bear and, and the red fox uh, and a number of different animals that are important. And then we combine that with the, um, with the design of the labels. This label looks very special. Could you tell me about it? You will see Hee Hee Talkin is really our signature wine. It's what we're most well known for. And on the label, you will see a picture of an elk standing on its hind legs uh, at an old fashioned wine press. Uh, and that is a representation of Trenton learning how to make wine. It's an amazing venue here. Like the view is stunning over there, like looking out in the Okanagan Valley. I, I was wondering if you could tell us about some of your operations and the event planning. We, we have done live music in the summer on our, our beautiful patio that wraps around the building here for people to come and sit on the patio and enjoy the view and, and a nice glass of wine and, and a casual setting. Uh, we are able to do small weddings. Uh, we do host a number of wine club uh, events. So our wine club is one of the most flexible in the valley and allows you to choose the wines in your shipment twice a year. We do from time to time offer some small discounts. So for National Indigenous Peoples Day on June 21st, We'll have uh, some things going on then as well. Well, Nicole, Don, I want to thank you both for coming out today and uh, learning all about Indigenous World Winery. Uh, there's one more thing I want to leave you with, though, before you go, uh, and that's the cheers here at Indigenous World. So whenever we finish up, uh, we like to say something that has some meaning to the Indigenous people here. And so spahus, your spahusa, is your heart or your center or your being, and hachs means happy or good or well. So we like to say husks bahus, and that means good heart or, or happy health. Uh, so to both of you, husks bahus. Husks bahus. Wow, Don, that was so much fun. I really liked walking through the vineyard and just seeing the land that produces this excellent wine. And I liked the process that went in behind it too. Yeah, what was your favorite part? Yeah, my favorite part was checking out the labels. I really appreciated how each label told a kind of story and showed a local animal and had the, the local Celix language word for that animal. Yeah, that really impressed me. Yeah, I think we have to come back and bring all our friends. What do you think? Yeah, I think so too. I think they're going to love it. I think so too. <laughs>